pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Have approval of the October 13th regular meeting. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And then we also have approval of the September financial reports. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Just a quick reminder to people on the call that if you participate in the call, you're giving permission to be recorded. Um, and welcome everyone. First on the agenda is second reading of ordinance 2020-006, an ordinance regulating the use of golf carts within Culvertown limits. We had a first reading on this at the last meeting. Um, and just for the sake of, of people who are here tonight and for the council, um, I believe that when this passed on first read, we had amended the registration fee to $80. There was also a motion to keep the fee for businesses at $40 for registration of each cart. Um, and then I believe uh, all the other amendments that have been made to the ordinance were accepted as part of that first read. Um, am I summarizing that properly? Is there one? I had, I had put down 60. Was that? Oh, 60. 60. Okay. okay, I'm sorry. I thought so. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, 60. 60 and 40. Yeah, 40. you're correct. Um, and I believe it passed on first read, uh, three to two. So we have a second read tonight. Um, before asking if, if there's any other uh, additional citizen input, does anyone on the council have? further discussion or comments or have you had any feedback from anybody or any uh, new thoughts on the ordinance bill? Uh, I just wonder whether we've got a little ambiguity here in section eight. Uh-huh. Um, we say, and this has not been amended, but it's uh, um, adult passenger drivers are not to hold children on their lap while the vehicle is in operation. How do we define children? Good question. I've actually seen adults hold adults on laps on these things. <laughs> um, maybe it is not holding any other human being on the lap. I don't know. Another, person. Another thoughts on that? Yeah, if we're allowing 36 inches of height, that could be a young enough child that I guess that could be questioned. Because, uh, you know, many. I think if we just maybe say person on their lap, because that would prevent adults from overcrowding golf cart. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we can amend, amend that sentence and make it person yeah, instead I, of child. I, that'd be fine. I, uh, I think that's a good point to make. Uh, and not have to define the age of who's holding or who's being held. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> um, any other thoughts on the ordinance? Jonathan, Karen, any other thoughts that you want to share? Either of you? No. Okay. Wayne, are you here tonight? No, he's in a meeting. Okay, I just want to make sure there was any other input there. Um, I will, I think anyone want to have citizen input on this who's either via phone or in the room? So I know we had our public hearing on first read, had a lot of input on that. Does anyone else? Okay, I just want to make sure. Um, I know Sally and I were not comfortable with the registration fee at the last meeting. Um, so I know Karen provided some data to us on the cost of administering the registration. Um, I, I think uh, the cost for deputy clerk was a, a little under $6 per registration fee. Then there's also um, if we include uh, police labor, 
you all know what that looks like from a budget standpoint. Um, I still don't feel like we could justify a $20 increase just based on that information. Does anyone have any thoughts on that? Or are you all stuck on 60? I still feel that it should be 50. Okay. Three gentlemen, any thoughts on 50? I believe that it's 60. Okay, thanks, Bill. I don't, I don't feel that the $60 is over. I mean, the $10 difference in, in, in it, uh, with the um, with the additional enforcement that we're talking about with, with the ordinance, um, I mean, I, I don't think. I don't think that that's going to be state. What do you mean by additional enforcement? Well, I think that there are there are um, there are highlighted stipulations in terms of the not just the requirements, but also the age reiterating the age restrictions. The thing about the height of children, um, no passengers on maps. Um, I think that that's you know, and we're asking the police department to enforce those for safety reasons. And I think that that is a, is a time gap for result in that. Okay. To me, it's, it, the language is more specific, which makes it more useful. Um, because before we weren't that specific, but to me, when you stop a golf cart for whatever reason, it you know, it's negligible. If they were stopping a golf cart because someone's hanging off it or they think they're driving, uh, this to me just would help that situation even more. I don't know that it would make them any more less efficient, I guess. But I obviously don't agree with the fee either, so. And I, I took to heart the public input that we had last time too. I thought it was uh, good, valuable, positive input. And if we're gonna have public engagement, we should probably be good listeners about it, but. I think you, I mean, I think we have listened, we started at 100 and we're down to 60 and mm -hmm. making a provision for businesses with more than 10 cars. But I think, I think we've been responsive. Yeah, I know that the that point on the businesses came up last time and I know uh, it was part of the motion, but we didn't really have much in-depth discussion. I know Bill made a comment about it at, at one point uh, I, I do think whoever made the point that they're still using the road and they're still having the privilege of driving the cart on the road and it's no different than a citizen driving that cart on the road. Um, and that, that to me that fee should just be the same. I, I still disagree with that as well. I mean, I understand the point of it, but I, just because I don't choose to make a living off of renting golf carts or selling them or whatever the case may be, um, I don't see why the business should have to pay less for the privilege of being on the road. Um, that's just my take on it. I got that feedback from some people as well as the ones who were here and gave that feedback. You know, it's the same usage. If it were a different usage or there were something, I don't know, where I, you know, that business is somehow giving back in some way that I'm unaware of. I don't know, but I thought that was a, a point in the ordinance that struck me as unfair to the resident who's still paying taxes. I mean, it's all you're using. It's like saying, well, rental car businesses should not have to pay the same license plate fee that I, the resident, have to pay simply because they're in business. I, I don't get that. Why are we doing that? I, I uh, your, your point about, uh, you know, fairness to other citizens. I hadn't thought about that, but I, I support that. I'm not, I'm not uh, as much in favor of the uh, $40 reduction <laughs> for, for those that was before. And I still contend this, that, you know, as a business, it's a pass through. Right. But I understand the position there that the people who've spoken on it are in, but I also look at the residents who are just they have the same privilege on the road that anyone else does. So anyone else feel that way? 
I would agree with that. So if we amended it to be the same fee, whether it's business or resident, is that agreeable to the council? You want to make that the motion? I'll second. I'll make that motion. I'll second. That the fee be the same. So it be the same for individuals as well as the rental company. Okay. All in favor of that? Aye. Aye. Okay. So we're back to the sixty dollars. Um, I'll motion to make it fifty dollars and see if that holds any weight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying on behalf, of, on behalf of all the people who have complained to me about this. I'm giving it my best shot. I'll okay, I got a second from Sally. Are we in favor of a $50 registration fee instead of 60? All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Nay, please say. Nay. 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 Okay, thank you. So my assumption is this will pass at second read with the one amendment to making the registration fee the same at sixty dollars. And I would change the wording to another person. With that amendment, okay. Section eight. The section eight, section eight amendment. Okay. So Rich has made a motion for that. Karen, did you get all that? To pass this on second read with $60 being the fee and uh, the same fee for businesses with the amendment to section eight that Bill suggested earlier that Do Jonathan has documented. This is being recorded, right? Yes. <laughs> so Rich made a motion. Is there a second to that? Okay, all in favor? Aye. I'm going to say nay just because I disagree with that fee still. Sally, did you say nay as yes, well? Okay. That vote was just on the change to the wording bill, wasn't it? In section eight? Yes. And, uh, and the fee being $60 for both registration oh, and businesses. Right. Yes. Right. yes. And this is on second read. Sorry, so the, the motion passes on second read and we'll have a third read at the next meeting since Sally and I still disagree on that registration fee. We're holding out for one of you to change your minds. <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, that also then would lead to the second read for the horse-drawn carriage. Um, uh, ordinance, which is pretty much follows the golf cart ordinance. I think, Sal, you found something yeah. that needed to be section, amended, though. Section seven, it refers instead of horse lawn, it refers to golf cart. Oh, yep, gotcha. Yeah. And this needs to be changed, too. And so on this one, do we also agree to the changes we made on the golf cart one, including Sally's amendment? to change where it says golf carts to horse drawn carriage. Is that a motion to pass this on second read with that change as Go well move. as the others? Go move. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And I'm a nay as well I'm on this nay. one as well. And so is Sally. Okay. Want to roll from the third? We can't. Oh yeah. Yeah, because Sally and I said nay. Sorry. That make us get through one more round of begging. <laughs> All right. Next, we have the first reading of Ordinance 2020-010, an ordinance amending and restating the parking regulations. Um, I think this is probably short enough it could be read, you think? Um, whereas the Town Council of the Town of Culver, Indiana has control over the streets, alleys, and parking requirements of said town, and whereas the town has received a request from Culver Community School Corporation to establish a second drop off and pickup zone for Culver Elementary School on Lakeshore Drive through changes and restrictions for an on street parking. And whereas the town has the authority to implement parking restrictions within town limits, therefore be it resolved by the Culver Town Council as follows. A no parking zone previously established in Ordinance 2020 005 shall be extended by an additional 20 on the north side of Lakeshore Drive between School Street and Slate Street, approximately 260 feet in total length during specific times on school days. 
no parking allowed on the north side of the Lakeshore Drive, beginning 30 feet west to the intersection of School Street and Lakeshore Drive, heading west for 260 feet to the school bus parking entrance. This zone shall be no parking between the hours of 7.45 and 8.30 a.m. Monday through Friday, and between 2.45 and 3.30 p.m. Monday through Thursday, and 1.45 to 2.30 p.m. on Friday during school days. The parallel parking space previously designated as handicap parking in Ordinance 2020-005 shall no longer be designated as handicap parking, shall be incorporated into the no parking zone described above. All other parking and traffic restrictions shall remain unchanged. Any questions uh, for Jonathan or school on this ordinance? Okay. I know we previously discussed it before we had the draft in front of us. So um, do I have a motion to approve first read on ordinance 2020-10? I move. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Were there any nays on that? Okay. Do you want to suspend the rules and pass in second and third read, or do you want to wait till next meeting for that? No, Let's there's see, not a. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll move this instead of rules. Okay. And pass in second and second. third. Yes. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Next on the agenda is resolution 2020-007, a resolution of the town of Culver to provide for reimbursement of public health and public safety payroll costs with the CARE Act's funding. Do you want to I dive into this a bit, Karen? Yeah, I can explain. Is that um, seven or five? It's actually yeah. seven, I had it corrected. Oh, it's yeah. Okay. Yeah. You have the old agenda. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so when the federal government uh, passed the CARES Act funding, uh, Indiana was allocated a certain amount. Governor Holcomb allocated $300 million of that CARES Act funding for counties, cities, and towns. Culver's allocation of those funds is $46,589, and it was based, I believe, on population. Um, originally, the money was intended primarily for the purchase of the PPE and other items necessary to address the pandemic. However, um, not a whole lot of money was spent for those items, and um, there probably wasn't enough hand sanitizer that you could purchase with $46,000 available at that time. Um, but recently, the Indiana Finance Authority added uh, reimbursement for public safety and public health payroll expenses to the list of allowable expenses. And basically, because they wanted to make sure that whatever they allowed us to use those funds for would be allowed by the federal government, it wouldn't later be reneged upon and we would have to pay that back. Um, so for Culver right now, the simplest item to be reimbursed, uh, to use for reimbursement is a police payroll. Um, there's a ton of overtime in that payroll right now. Um, and it's just a, a very simple, I, can, I just need to provide payroll documentation. Um, but in order to apply for that refund, we have to pass this resolution um, that establishes the process by which the funds will be receded in the CARES Act fund and then expended for police payroll. So I've also provided uh, a letter that Jenny needs to sign and the application. So once that's all done, I will submit it. And word is that people are receiving reimbursement within about 48 to 72 hours. Yeah, so. I heard the same. So motion to approve resolution 2020-007, a resolution of the town of Culver to provide for reimbursement of public health and public safety payroll costs with the CARES Act funding. So moved. And we uh, add to that motion authorization for you to sign the, the letter applying the letter and send it to you a separate one. Uh, probably a separate one. Okay. I actually have a question. Mm -hmm. Does the CARES Act also include uh, the cost that we can submit the cost for uh, cleaning buildings that we had COVID? Well, we can do that as well. Um, but the kind of the guidance that I've been getting is just to do one big, you know, police payroll 
and it's you know just one item, I can provide all the information, documentation. Basically, what's going to happen is that money will end up back in the general fund and kind of offset costs for other things. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, if, if that's the route you want me to go, I will. I can do that. That's fine. But that was about we had three buildings, so it'd be about seventy five hundred dollars of that. It's not going to increase the reimbursement. It's not. No, it's not. Gonna, the reimbursement amount is. And what we can it reach is. that reimbursement amount with the police over there. Yes. Okay. I have a second bill motion. Okay. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 And then can we have a motion to authorize me to sign the paperwork to make this happen? Um, that was the two bills, Karen. Uh, all in favor? Uh, Aye. All right. We are moving along here. Um, not seeing this. Is this one come under your report, Jonathan? 09. Fire drive. Do it under fire. Okay. All right. I'll move on then to West Shore Drive access road feedback from residents. I think Jonathan sent out the feedback we received on that. Uh, for the most part, it sounds like if we don't rename the road, that would be the preference of the majority of the citizens living along there. Um, and then, of course, he had the stats for what name would be picked if we did rename that road. Um, so my my only question was, do, if we educate EMS and fire and police, do we feel like they know where to go if there's a call coming from that area? I mean, Wayne's not here, so I guess I would probably hold off and again, uh, take his feedback maybe at the next meeting on it. Uh -huh. but, um, Obviously, our regulars don't have an issue. It's more, you know, when you hire a new part-time person who isn't from Marshall County in either department, those are the ones we worry about. And um, or occasionally, I think Wayne brought up at the one meeting. Sometimes they may have a pretty good idea, but the dispatchers might not know where it is and send them in the wrong direction. So um, I, I know a lot of people that responded gave examples of them getting there on time and knowing right where it is and that's the case 99% of the time but the concern is that 1% where it'd be improperly dispatched or we'd have a part time person who doesn't know where it is. So. Is there a, um, a navigation system in the ambulances in the police car so if you put in an address so, because these are all legitimate addresses in Beacon so um, on a West Shore Drive number so yeah if they put in Nine twenty-two. Or, or so police definitely does. I know Jeff's on. Does EMS? I, Jeff, are you on? No, we do not have any type of navigation in there. Um, so we we rely on <clears throat> some of the people use their own phone for navigation. Uh, so it's not really one hundred percent reliable with the navigation systems because of changes and mapping and everything. But uh, we don't have anything like that at the current time. Okay, thank you, Jeff. Um, uh, I, I think that's a, a valid point in having in past and having passed very familiar with dispatch. Uh, I can see where there's been there's quite a bit of turnover up there. Mm -hmm. You get a new dispatcher, and really the call starts with the dispatcher. And um, I think that it would remove any any doubt if it had a different name because it could be put into their system up there under a different name. Sally, any thoughts on that with your EMS well, experience as well? I know that we've never, all the years that I was on, uh, never had any problem finding those houses that were on the point in the Chatham Shore area. Uh, I do know that South Shore has South Shore Lane, which goes off from it. Um, and I'm thinking that there's a, a West Shore Lane. All right. 
already. So is this one technically currently called West Shore Street or Lane? West Shore Drive. And then this section that goes around Chadwick Shores, as far as our records go, is unnamed. If you look on, you know, some very like Google Maps or something like that, they do give it different names. I one calls it something and you know everybody calls it something else. All of those addresses in Beacon are West Shore Drive. On Beacon, they're West Shore Drive, that's correct. Oh, okay. Which is the county. And that's in, that's what the citizens put when they fill out bills right. and their own. Yeah. Okay. So are there any two numbers yeah. that would be identical between no, the actual? No, yeah. the section of basically it's Chadwick Shores. It's actually on West Shore Drive, and there are no conflicts between the two in terms of addresses. You know, as it goes around there, they all have West Shore Drive addresses, and then Chadwick basically the thing actually on West Shore Drive in between okay. there and they, they all have different ones. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I was uh maybe dredge up some memories that it's West Shore Circle. Yeah, West Shore mm -hmm. Circle is the other one. Oh okay. yeah, which yeah and that's a whole separate area. Yeah and East Shore Drive. And on all of those the numbers for the the county just are pretty uh like East Shore, it just continues down the lane and comes back out and goes around. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts then? I, Bill, I think that was a legitimate um, issue. Any other issues for this? We do have citizen issues. I know Ann had submitted a letter that I think is in front of some of you mm -hmm. that Jonathan had forwarded to us on email. Um, so I know that you would not like to have this change well, because of all the changes change, you have to it make. Change, whatever, it seems like everybody here is mostly concerned about the EMS. It, I guess it doesn't matter what the name of the street is. If they don't have a GPS in the system, it, what difference does it make to them then? If, you know, by changing the name, that doesn't make any sense to me. It's if they don't. If they don't have a GPS that says West Shore Drive, why are they going to have a GPS that says West Shore Lane and not going to? And like this gentleman said, it's all in Beacon already anyway. Everybody that has ever called, and we don't get that much, there's only seven houses up there. They had no issues. One, one of my neighbors, a summer, he pocket dialed and they called right away and they knew he was out on his, sitting on his boat. They, they know where we're at. And, to, for the huge inconvenience that it's going to cost and be for us to change all of our stuff just for it sounds like the council is mostly concerned about the EMS. It's that they're not an issue. The EMS is not an issue. They know where we're at is, is, is the only thing I can stress to you as a council. Okay. Um, I don't see it an issue either. I wonder, is there a way to just label it um, West Shore Drive? It's, I mean, you're concerned about the beginning of a street it sign. Have a label on it. It's not. It's not labeled. There's no numbering inconsistency, so there wouldn't be a duplication yeah. of numbers. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, they go in the wrong direction for a, a drive versus you know, a lane or something like that. But, um, so put up a street sign that says what they're referring well, to it as now. Essentially, every year. And not send us a letter, and they really keep track of that in addition to us. So, yeah, I mean, if we put up a sign notified in dot that we named it that instead of access drive, that would take care of a lot of that, I think. But, but again, right, then you've got West Shore Drive as and well West as Shore West Shore Drive. It's just West Shore Drive goes, yeah. Well. So, I <laughs> we have a loop on West I, it's Shore not, Drive. I don't, I don't know if there's a perfect solution, yeah, that makes everybody happy. Yeah, so. that, that gets closer though, I think. Yeah. I, Kevin, did I see your hand go up? I'm sorry. Yeah, um, I was just going to mention this so you guys were aware. You named Cavalier Drive in 2017, and it is still not on Google and the other ones. So it's going to mess people up for years yeah. before it gets changed for just the normal stuff. And if it's not an EMS problem, like you say, I, I think you're causing more issues than it's worth for people in the community. The GPS that I have in my phone and in my car tells me that I'm 
home a block before I get there. Yeah. Um, tells me to turn around. <laughs> I, I think labeling the streets probably a good start if we want to think this one through or, you know, see how that would go for a year or two. Um, so I know like when I'm in Indianapolis, I, you know, at one point I'm at South, 80, you know, I'm on East 86th Street, then I'm on West 86th Street, I'm still on 86th Street, yeah. and it's just kind of like, okay, I can't even, I, I have no sense of direction though, so I'm like, well, which is it? <laughs> um, so maybe this is sort of West Shore Drive further east of West Shore yeah. Drive. <laughs> East West Shore Drive. I don't know. But they find us, so that's all that really matters. Right. If it were labeled, I would feel a lot more comfortable for those newer people, though, because I mean, Bill's right. If dispatch gets it off, then you've got an EMT or a firefighter now looking for it. You know, so it it can be a miscommunication between dispatch and those people. Well, I don't know where this dispatching comes from, but it almost seems like. Of course, there's way more stuff we have to sometimes. And they come in off the lake. The, the lake patrol guys that are on the water are at our houses way faster. Actually, some, sometimes a, a street guy shows up when it's already all taken care of by the water guys. So I don't know how that all works, how they get dispatched out. Dispatch is done through the county. So, we pay a, a fee to dispatch to have that done. Many years of house alarm went off, and the water guy came. Yeah, house alarm is different though. Right. That's more a, a private security or right. whoever he's and connected he into. Came from the water, and I was like, oh, okay. you know, I said, no, I've got it under control. So yeah, it was just I don't know where that came from. But. So at this point. Uh, do we want to make a decision on this, Council? I say stick a sign up and I'll look down and see if it works. Is that a motion? Yes. Second. All in favor of the motion seconded by Rich and first by Sally? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. So we'll put a sign up for. What it's currently called, West Shore Drive, and West Shore Drive, no West yep. Shore Drive. Thank you. Exactly. Much. I live at West Shore Drive and West Shore Drive. <laughs> um, all right. So next we have Regional Stellar Plan update. Um, I really don't. I don't have anything update-wise. Do you have anything? Yeah. You the only add? thing I had was on the message board uh, sign. Uh, just so everyone's aware, we'll receive a $25,000 OCRA grant uh, plus $3,333 from Marshall County Tourism to install that LED sign uh, at the intersection of State Road 10 and School Street. Um, I got an original quote. We had talked, Jenny and I had met on site with them when they were here a couple weeks ago and uh, looked at a couple of upgrades, but the quote came back higher than what the grant funding was. So. I'm asking for a revision at this point and waiting to get that back. Um, the town would have some cost probably to run electric to the site um, as, as kind of a, a very small local match, um, but I'm waiting to get kind of the details finalized on the sign itself and then I'll have a quote for that sometime in the near future. Besides electric, do you have to provide internet access? <sighs> That's a good question, Jenny. Have you been in on that discussion? I don't know. Also, yeah, how it's because it is, I assume, because it's updated online, right? Yeah. There's a software program to actually um, do that. I don't know if it's hard, it could be hardwired and connected into whatever's at the school building or. I would assume it's built into the software because it, it wasn't spec'd out separately. But even like the modems we have for police that are, mm -hmm. we pay monthly. We service can, charge for those. Yeah, yeah, we can we can ask about that with Shannon. Yeah, that hadn't come up yet. And programming wise on it, are we going to have <coughs> some input or access to do programming on it? The town will have we have control of okay. the input of it. Good. All right. But the county and and Marshall County Tourism right. will be allowed to do 
messaging on it as well. Um, the COVID grant specifically says that it has to be available for COVID purposes. So the way we wrote the application was if the county wanted to communicate you know, countywide, they would be allowed to use the boards for that. And that, honestly, that would go beyond COVID because that's also how we wrote it up in the Stellar Grant. It was really meant to, to be a countywide system, but each town will have their own control as well. So Jonathan can message on it all day long. Karen can message <laughs> on it all day long. They could provide access to other organizations if they want to. They could charge okay. a fee if they want. I, mean, I would I would tell me that, and from the original discussions, I was under the impression we could use it, able to use it for things like promoting events and tourism and, and yes. things that the visitor center does a lot. Yep. It can be used that way. Um, and, our, and the hope is also that there'll be cross promotion of events between towns, at least the Crossroads team, the original project in the stellar application was written that way. But because we went after the COVID money, we has to be geared toward that as well. Um, so yeah, no local cost force yet, but we will be responsible for getting electric to it um, once the signs purchased and, and ready to be installed sometime next year. Uh, and then the Marshall County Trail Master Plan that uh, some of us here participated in, there's a section in it relating to Culver. Uh, that's nearly completed, and I sent you all the link to that draft if you wanted to take a look at it. That was all I had on regional stuff. Great, thank you. Uh, so we'll go on this stellar plan update with Jonathan and then town manager's report. I really didn't have anything on stellar um, this time. It's, I think breaking the streak of 20 straight meetings with project <laughs> updates and everything, with two of them completed, a uh, little break today. All right, so we'll move on to town manager report. Uh, just a note, uh, the meetings for are with the economic development facilitator have been set for November 6th and 13th, and I think I've talked to all the council members, or if I haven't yet, please let me know. Um, we have different sessions and times on the 6th, which one you'd like to attend, if I haven't heard from you yet. Um, e and paving uh, let Bob know that their concrete crews were scheduled to start work this week uh, with paving to follow soon on South Main and Davis and Bob will probably have some more details on that on his report. Um, uh, I submitted our community crossing matching grant uh, road paving applications for next year. Those have been submitted uh, based on a list I provided to you at the last meeting. And I have a proposal from Seller Services uh, to renew snow removal contract for commercial sidewalks in town. Uh, and it's similar to last year's. It's a in that it's a variable fee per incident. It starts at nine hundred and fifty six dollars and six cents for a two inch snowstorm. Um, and I'd ask for a motion to approve uh, renewal of that contract with seller services. So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 And the last thing I had was that our park survey that was on the town Facebook page and on TGL, we had 230 online responses get in. Um, we closed that, I think, yesterday. So We'll start reviewing those. I think Amber got a lot in person, <coughs> paper versions, and uh, the citizen ran it as well, and she got some that people took out of there. And filled I out, think that's so. a really good number. Yeah, we're yeah. happy with that. So hopefully next meeting we'll have some thoughts on that and share that with you all. Okay. That's all I had. Great, thank you. Uh, so on to department head reports. Uh, Jeff, EMS is up first if you're still on the line. Yes, I'm on the outline there. Thank you. I've sent all all five of you a uh, email today. I'm sorry for getting it so late, um, but I have three things for your consideration. Um, you can review each one of them and uh, not make any motion today. Uh, the only one really is the second one, but if uh, the first one is the billing, um, please review that. Look it over. Let me know uh, your thoughts. I'd be more than happy to sit down with all of you, each one of you individually, and go over some more detailed questions of it with the negotiating with the fee schedule uh, from 8.75 down to 6.6. .6. 
and also some other reductions um, with the fees along with switching uh, the EPCR uh, software as well. Uh, these will all uh, enhance the service better, uh, will give us a better control when it comes to billing. We will still use Acumed as the billing provider and uh, will allow uh, some better control and some better documentation when it comes to the run reports. And it will also allow us uh, some better uh, reports and uh, information as we need it um, to trend certain things that are going on within the community. Hey, Jeff. Yes. This is Jonathan. Hey, um, when you talked about switching the software, uh -huh. you mentioned in there that there would be an upfront expense, but you thought it would save some money long term. Could you explain that a little bit? OK, uh, the current provider that we have is ESO. Uh, the provider I'm like I'm wanting to go to is called Image Trend. They are also the preferred provider for the state of Indiana. The initial upfront cost um, will be well, it's about 40. It's about forty five hundred dollars, so it's about a five hundred dollar increase from what we would normally pay for the ESO software yearly. And then after the first year, that, that fee would be cut in half. Oh, so okay. with, the, um, with the reduction in fees, processing fees, and with this, um, I still project a decent savings within that uh, contractual services uh, for that. So it really would not cost us anything more to switch to it. Um, we would just not have as much uh, of a reduction in fees this year. It would be more or next year it would be more in 2022 when that when that software fee would get cut in half. Great. Thank you, Jeff. Uh -huh. um, also, I had a, oh, a lengthy conference call with uh, Acumed and we discussed uh, current run fees and uh, based on national trends, local trends. And so uh, what I provide you with is a proposal, um, what I'm proposing to go with. Currently, you'll see the resident and non-resident. And uh, I'm going to a one fee based system because what is hard to do is determine who is a resident, who's not a resident. And so uh, keeping it simple would just be keeping it this way. This is something that I look for all of you to look at and think about and then let me know which way you'd like to proceed on that. Um, but these are the fees that we talked about uh, in the in the uh, conversation with Acumed and based upon um, some recovery fees and everything that they're seeing trending wise, these were the numbers that we needed to be focusing on. A quick question about that, Jeff. Uh -huh. um, when we were saying non-resident, does that mean it would have been someone in the township that we're servicing, or are we talking about someone who's a year-round resident versus? And uh, well, see, that's what's hard right now, and that's what's something with Acumed that they said that they had no way of tracking who was a resident and who wasn't a non-resident. Um, there's no way uh, for the crews to determine. Yes, you could you could look at a non-resident and say, oh, their driver's license, um, their billing information says Chicago you know, uh, Indianapolis, something of that nature. But those people could also have a home um, on the lake or within the community. So it's a very uh, hard thing to always keep track of. And so it's uh, if if we can't determine that 100 percent, then it's it's something that just becomes a gray area and it's never it's never been able to have been processed uh, that way. So they've been billing it um, strictly with the resident fee. Uh, for as long as they've been doing it. Okay. I was just curious. I didn't even know we, I, I guess I didn't realize we had two separate ones. Yes. Uh, and I, I couldn't, I wasn't sure if that meant township versus in town. And of course, no. the township, you know, pays for part of the, our, our yeah. expenses. I and think it was intended to be the entire township. Yeah, it would be considered the rest. Of that's, what I'm guessing that was the case. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. And so then a couple of those I said I noted as removed because these are areas that we just do not bill for period. Um, they either cannot be billed because of uh, regulation or we just do not offer that service anymore. So uh, that is that. Next item is cardiac monitors. Uh, this came after the budget hearings, and so it caught me off guard a little bit. But after uh, doing a little bit of review, to sum it up real quick, is our two cardiac monitors that we have 
have these control boards that are inside. These control boards control everything inside the units. Um, and they're already into version four and we have version one. Due to a lot of corporate compliance, uh, the manufacturer cannot produce that to version one board anymore. And when Physio Control uh, became aware of all this, they were not, from what the salesman could tell me, we're not keeping an eye on what they had on, uh, on hand for servicing. Long story even shorter is that basically after the first of the year, if these things break, if they go bad, it's basically a brick. It will not be able to be used anymore. We cannot get replacement parts for it anymore, and it will not be used, uh, will not function at all. We can't put a version four board in there or any other version. It, they're specifically designed to work with that uh, version of board that they put in there. So they offered a uh, an offer that expires at the end of the month here for a 50%. And what took me a little bit of time was uh, working with them to find a creative way to kind of make this work here. And so they're offering a three year at 0% financing. So we'll use their money and then we'll uh, pay the first year 5,000, second year 7,500 and the final payment of 23. And then we will get two brand new cardiac monitors that we will not have to worry about for the next seven years. Um, so, uh, the first payment would be due 30 days after the monitors are delivered and so forth. And so then the next payment would be, would be due a year from now. And then the final payment would be due in 2022. Uh, the goal of this also is yes, the final payment is large at 23 and some change, uh, is that with some other offset things and some other cost saving measures throughout the next year, uh, can actually make that second payment even more if I so choose to uh, not have the final payment be so loud. There's no prepayment penalty if we if we pay it off early, um, but I felt this was the, the best way to go. I did talk to Marlene on this as, as well, and she's willing to also commit uh, to this, and she understood the importance of this also. And so I'm asking for your uh, approval uh, for an additional appropriation um, for this for this. Uh, purchase and then the last item is hey, we have a question on that okay. one. Yeah, before you leave the cardiac monitors um you mentioned five thousand dollars in your email is that the town portion is that the combined town and township portion that is the town portion correct rich so there, it's five thousand each then. yes uh also what was needed to be done with these monitors that I was not aware when I started is that the cellular modems that are used with it to transmit the EKGs to the hospital are no longer serviceable at the end of the year. They're 3G modems and they are um, no longer being serviced by AT&T or Verizon. So those uh, that technology is, is going out and so the the uh, the effectiveness to be able to send it would not be there so we would have to upgrade that as well so the additional cost would be to to get uh, modems as well so these can transmit this and get the information sent to the hospital is that wrapped into the five thousand i'm sorry is that included in the five thousand or separate from that no it's it's ten total but five from each marlene's no, willing marlene's willing with the five and then five from the town and yeah, he, he's included. asking if the modems are included in this. The modems included in the monitors, so you can transmit the twelve leads. Uh, it's a it's a it's a, a part that goes on uh, connected with it. But it is included in the five thousand dollars cost. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So, so it's Jeff, approximately forty three thousand to the town over three years, and approximately forty three thousand to Marlene as well. Thirty five. Uh, no, it's going to be 515 is 20 plus another 23 is 43. That's there's three payments, right? 515, 23. Correct. It's 43 total to the town and 43 total to Marlene for these. No, it would be 43 total completely. So it's 2500 to each of us on the first payment, 7,500 to each of us on the second payment, and then the split of the 23, which would be like 12,500 on the third. Is that what you're saying? No, it's 
basically your the total fee the total fee would be forty three and some change by the time and it's Marlene's all done. covering so, five of it. The initial the initial configuration and then the rest of it would be fifty percent within the budget anyways. Unless. The other the other two payments would be encumbered in my budget the way I have it figured out okay. and through the. The 43 yeah. the first year payment is $10,000, five to the township and five to the town. Right, right. Okay, I got that. Yeah. So is Marlene helping with the other two years of payments? It would be within the whole budget. There would be no additional. Oh, okay. Opening. You're going to put it in next year's budget and the following year's budget of which. I have you already, I have already, yes, I've already figured it out to be able to cover that with reduction in contractual services and other related areas that I'm trying to cut additional cost with. So there would be no other additional fee. The additional fee is because I do not have anything left to to start this process this year. OK. So Jeff, just to be clear then, so what would be the actual payment in uh, 2021 and 2022? Uh, 7,500 and then 23,754 as it listed in there. Those would be the two final payments. And my suggestion, and my suggestion on this, since um, it, I already advertised for additional appropriations and that vote is sailed, um, that we take this money out of the EMS non-reverting gift fund, the 5,000. Um, it's a little bit simpler process to allocate that money. Um, and they have about $22,000 in that account right now. So. Okay. And then he'll take care of the other two payments via the budget the process. Okay. Karen, what motion do you need tonight for us if we approve this? Yeah. Yeah, the whole just thing? where it, well, I'll let Jeff ask for that motion, but in that motion, just include the initial payment will come from the EMS. So, yes, I'd like the motion to uh, approve this contract, pay the initial 5000 and get these monitors ordered. And then I will uh, take care of the other two payments in the following years. Will they have this by the end of the year? Yes, uh, he said about a 30 to 45 day window at the max. So the, the two that are old, the version ones, do we just hold those as extras? No, they get turned back in. Okay. We have a motion to approve. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any against? Okay. Okay. Anything else, Jeff? Yeah, the last one here is. Um, is to increase the allowable amount to spend. Um, currently, right now, we have uh, I have a limit of 70, uh, 750. I'm asking to increase this to, to two grand. Um, the reason why I asked this is here lately we've had some uh, issues with maintenance um, repairs on the trucks, and uh, they were they were over above the 750. And uh, Jonathan did have to reach out to uh, all of you for a uh, approval. Uh, the only problem is is that they're there may be times where it may not happen fast um, and getting the truck in and out um, is something that I need to have since we only have one other vehicle. And so I'm what I'm asking for is a lot of the items that we do purchase are are really above the 750 that uh, going to the 2000 would help uh, be able to expedite the purchase of some of these items that uh, having uh, the amount increased uh, would greatly help out and reduce the the time at times when it can't be done quickly. Karen, right now for claims, we set that at fifteen hundred, right? So if we did two thousand for EMS, should we just go ahead and do the claims that way too? So we're consistent. So or? right now, it's a department head can approve seven hundred fifty by themselves, and then. If you it's and Karen between 750 and 1500 Karen and I can give them the okay anything over that requires council approval okay and I think what Jeff was suggesting was 
incre increasing his, which would be the department head one to me. I, I would think if you do one, you at least consider do all of them. That's how we've mm -hmm. done in the past. But I, I mean, why would we um, authorize them to build the 750, but you would cure it, do up to the 2000, and then anything over 2000, the council would approve? I mean, they can still get quick access and, and decision from one of the two of you to go to the 2000 if necessary. I don't have a problem with 2000 at the department level either, though, given the high ticket items that we often. I mean, I can't repair, repair my car for 750 bucks on maybe tires. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> But you're suggesting, that. you're suggesting all the departments? Yeah, I mean, but consistency wise, it's just some of these pieces yeah, of like equipment. Otherwise, Karen and Jonathan have to be like, oh, wait, you're EMS, you have 2,000, but police, you're 1,000. And I think that just no, gets I, yeah. messy. Oh, so the motion would be to allow department heads and Karen and Jonathan up to $2,000 expenditures without council approval until. Claims come to council. Second. Okay, I'll make the first question, Karen. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Back to you, Jeff. <laughs> well, thank you, all of you. Uh, last thing is, is um, believe it or not, our call volume is up, even with uh, COVID this year. Um, right now, we're sitting at uh, two, or excuse me, three fifty nine. And uh, we were at 351 last year total calls. So uh, we are up and we didn't even have a summer camp this year and school was reduced. So we are seeing a greater need uh, for the service. And so our numbers are trending up, which is actually um, also trending with our, with our revenue base as well. So our revenue offset will be helped greatly with the additional call volume as well. So other than that, I appreciate um, all your consideration tonight. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Okay, thank you, Jeff. Mm -hmm. um, fire department. Uh, He's in the dark back right there. Didn't see you sneak in. I know, I snuck in. Get How's that new truck? <laughs> nice, um, just a few things. I to thank you for what you've done around this very well. I'd like to thank you to all of those come out in cold weather last night to see Lila Long. I think that went extremely well. I want Jonathan to face um, much more people than we expected. I forgot to see this live up and down and had coffee snacks and free t shirts and hats. And I, I think a lot of people really enjoyed that. Um, so that went well. Lila Long is in service as of last night. So it's in service. And um, I did sign an acceptance of the Marsh Community. Marshall County Community Foundation grant that Bobby wrote for $2,500 for medical equipment for our squad. So that was approved. So That's great. Congratulations on that. I kept free money. <laughs> okay. And then the only other thing is um, the resolution. Oh, Jenny's got a copy. Yeah, I have a copy of it here. Um, this is a resolution of the Town Council of the Town of Culver, Indiana, for approving the sale of the 1994 fire truck to Albany Township. And um, let me go down to the be it resolved section. The Town of Culver Union Township shall sell to Albany Township the 1994 fire Freightliner FL80 fire truck. It's a tongue twister. With vehicle identification number, I won't say that whole lump number, for the sum of $30,000. Albany Township agrees to purchase the used fire truck from the Town of Culver and Union Township for that $30,000. Albany Township is purchasing the fire truck as is, with a further understanding that the decals for the Culver Union Township Fire Department shall be removed and replaced with the appropriate decals. And number four, the transaction and delivery is to be completed immediately. Um, and if I remember right, half of that then goes to the township and half back to Culver fire, right? So we need to approve this resolution so that Ken can go make that happen with Albany Township. You got a question, Brent? Did we get the, from the right first refusal from the county? Yes. Okay. So we got all six? All seven. All seven. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So 
and often on a constant needs to uh, prove a similar resolution. Yes. I've ordered her a copy of what we've approved tonight, and she's aware of that. Is that one of the signatures you're asking for, too, by the way? Yes. Okay. So, motion to approve resolution 2020 008. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 She's supposed to come up and bring the check. You can take it. She's bringing the check, and I've got the title. Okay, so long. You have to get the check before we deliver the truck. Oh, you can go ahead and deliver the truck. She's bringing a check and I'll give her the title. Last thing is recognition for Karen Hine. She jumped through hoops today, all day long. Thank you, Karen. It wasn't her it wasn't her pig, but she chased it. Thank you for that. Just so you know, you had another visitor at your uh, <laughs> open house last night, except the town manager report says open house for the new truck is tonight at 60. So I thought it was tonight. So was he didn't tonight. open it yesterday when I sent it to him. You got to read it when I open it, Jim. Or something. Yeah, we'll take it for right. And Ken, I was bummed I couldn't go. I had a business meeting, but I got to see the social media and I appreciate that you guys posted it. It's a sharp truck. Yeah, that's yeah, pretty cool. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, police, I don't, Wayne, did you join the call at all by chance? No, I did not. Okay. And so we'll move on to Park with Amber. Uh, I just need approval to go ahead and do the uh, holiday parade and tree lighting event for Friday, December 4th again. We'll do everything the same, except we won't include the indoor stuff that we usually do with the train people. We'll just keep it strictly an outdoor thing with the uh, tree lighting and the parade this year. No uh, cookie decorating or meet Santa this year. We're working with the stuff with Santa. Hopefully we can figure something out, but none of the like contact stuff this year. So. OK. I have a motion to approve this event. So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's all for me. Okay, thank you, Amber. And anything from utilities, Bob Porter? I'm here. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Davis Street, my nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> we originally designed it to just replace the concrete in pieces that were where an inlet was placed during the construction a subcontractor that their means and methods there was more concrete curbing that was damaged than was originally planned so we walked it today we marked what was damaged what needs to be replaced what was in the contract and if you take all that away from what is left I feel that if we would put a little bit more, oh, I'm not sure what the wording is. If we do a little bit more, we can have all new curbs and sidewalk instead of just piecemealing in between all the old sections. So I asked DMB for a quick, quick number for $16,560. We can do all the curb and sidewalk. There's a couple little pieces way down at the very end that won't be done because it didn't have anything originally and we could have all new curb and sidewalk instead of 80 percent new curb and sidewalk okay is that, is that on davis street? Predominantly? that's on on davis street yes and what the little round remax that that torn out remax uh, listening leaders that got torn out did you hear that bob I can't, I, you know, I can't. Sally was asking if that includes what got torn out around listing leaders. The around old where? <laughs> the old Remax building. Pam Baker's place. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, that little square. Yes, that does get replaced. That's that's included in the original contract. But and then where most of the extra work could be if you 
Well, don't drive it because it's pretty rough. But if you walk down through there, you can see where there's pieces of sidewalk that's still remaining. Those would all come out and it would be one fluid project. Bob, you said that there was a subcontractor who damaged or took up um, more curbing or sidewalk than they were supposed to. Are they bearing any responsibility for that in this redo? That would be between our prime contractor, which is E&B, and them. Because we did not hire HRP, well, the subcontractor, which was HRP. That'll be between them to deal with. But EMB paving is going to replace anything that was damaged during construction through their means and methods. But if you remove all those pieces and then leave what's not damaged or not scheduled to be replaced, it would be 16,560. 16,560 will get you a complete street. Do we have this within your uh, paving budget, Bob? I know we put up paving money for the crossroads match. What do you have yes, a we did. budget? Karen was working on that. She may be able to chime in a little bit more, but she told me that it is possible to have this 16,560 done, yes. Okay, from another line item. Yeah. Okay, Karen's shaking her head. Yes. <laughs> Bob, I, I thought of one question yeah. after we talked about it. Yep. Uh, the two houses on Davis Street that uh, will be affected by that trail project next year. I guess yes. I just wanted to, uh, as much of this 16,000 in that area, because I guess if there's a couple spaces that are going to be replaced next year anyway in that trail. I'd be less concerned about those. Those, okay. The way I handled that, that, well, it parts the main parcel on the corner from mm -hmm. Bispo be West is we'll replace the curb and sidewalk as it was in front of from obispo street to the alley or well the driveway would get replaced and then everything else would just kind of fade to nothing and we'll wait for the trail project to pick up some more of those to you okay. know, complete complete that project through there that section is not included in the sixteen thousand. that will be done per the means and methods it was damaged during construction so Okay. That piece won't be that piece won't be included in the sixteen thousand. Thank you. Yep. Approximately how many feet is the sixteen thousand? Oh, I, 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 I don't know. It's basically from on the north side. It would be from our lift station all the way to Peru Court. On the south side, it'll be through, well, Frank Staley's property, all that side of what could get replaced up to almost to Abyssbo over that. I'm not sure how much feet it is. I don't, I don't want to even guess it, but we walked with A&B. He measured it all up. I, yeah, he could give me that exact footage, but I don't have it in hand. Yeah. That gives me an idea. Yeah, I can yeah. visualize that better. Yeah. Any other questions for Bob? Do you have a motion to approve moving forward with this? So moved. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anything else, Bob? Mm, we're flushing hydrants this week and also the official kickoff of leaf season. So we'll be leafing everywhere. <laughs> That's all I have. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. All right. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Um, boards and commissions. Is anyone reporting from the plan commission or BZA tonight? Okay, do we have a report from the Redevelopment Commission? Um, two things to note. Um, first, just our regular meeting will be Monday, November 16th. Um, and also, just as an FYI to 
businesses in town are being interested in the facade grant program. Um, the CRC with um, MCDC is sponsoring a micro loan program. And those micro loans can be used for the owners of businesses that want to do a facade improvement um, as part of their matching dollars. So a, um, a business owner could apply for a loan to the um, the micro loan through the micro through the Marshall County Economic Development and use the proceeds from that as their matching funds on the facade grant. The interest rate is very low, I think it's at one percent. Um, so it's an opportunity for businesses that want to do some facade improvements to help to fund that at a pretty reasonable rate. So and we'll get out some more information on that as we move forward. So. Okay. Is there any report from the Tree Commission? Any numbers up there where there might be. Okay, clerk's report. I have three uh, claims for 1500, which apparently is the last week <laughs> for that threshold. Um, Cooter Street Service for $5,900, and that was for uh, expenses for the tree commission for tree removal. Fun Flix Outdoor Movies, $1,593.24 for park programs. And then $2,891.25 for Timio House, and that was for one of the sections for peer removal. So I could have a motion to approve those claims. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Just a reminder that the public hearing for additional appropriations is scheduled for November 10th. Um, and then on the 2021 budget, I did submit that to the Department of Local Government Finance um, the day after last meeting. And the field representative will review that and hopefully we'll get our budget recommendation in November. And the department should have final budget approval before the end of the year, providing no other hiccups. So, um, I did provide a, uh, a proposal from Peterson Consulting um, before the last meeting. Um, he is the gentleman that did our capital asset study last year. And he had a proposal for $1,800 to update the study with the 2020 capital asset additions. And I would recommend going ahead and doing so as um, we've got the additions, the capital improvements that have been made to this building, the Cavalier Park, um, and the stormwater project as well. Um, so if we could use him to get those updates, that would be um, probably more accurate than my guess today. Motion to approve the $1,800 for the study updates. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, I have a call with Jeff Rao of Baker Tilly regarding the bond capacity study, and it sounded like it wasn't going to be a whole lot. So we may just want to have him go ahead and do that. Um, but also wanted to suggest that maybe um, we look into doing a utility rate study. Um, in the near future, not suggesting that we increase rates, um, but just to check out to see where we're at as it's been the last one, I believe it was 2014. Yeah, it was the last rate study. And when we did it then, we didn't want to go much longer without and now it's been Yeah, we talked years. about another five years later. And yeah, so um, I will probably talk about a number of things I did indicate to him um, that we may be looking into that. So um, okay. if you're okay with that, I'll Karen, on, on that note, we actually, just as a reminder, uh, we had okayed um, one regarding our stormwater fee okay. back January or February, and actually Jeff was probably scheduled to come to a council meeting in March and April, or April okay. to provide an overview, and I have been thinking about that. I would like to, let's start with having him come back and we'll finish up that stormwater yeah. one this year. Um, I have an idea of how it's going to go, but we've got some more information, some better cost estimates on a couple projects that we were looking at. So let's do that one first and then on the water and sewer. Karen, on the bottom. Sure. Go ahead. Now, does uh, Jeff give any idea of what the bond fashion setting might cost? No, we're talking on Thursday. Oh, okay, thank you. His indication was it wouldn't take a whole lot for him to give me that idea. So, okay, good. Um, in turn, is the additional appropriations public hearing on the 10th <coughs> during the regular council meeting or is it going to be earlier? It's just like any other public hearing that we have during the regular during meeting. During the regular meeting, okay. 
Uh, speaking of studies, thinking we should open that can of worms with our, you know, when we did the look at emergency services costs um, to have a conversation with the academy um, about the contribution that they make and getting something more concrete and maybe contractual, um, given this sort of in-depth look that Jeff's been taking uh, with EMS and the increases we've seen there. I want to go back and look at that again um, and start start those conversations again under the new head of schools because um, we've we've lapsed on that since the last head of schools but it's time to go back and so maybe we could start having Jeff and uh, Wayne and um, Ken kind of get those numbers back together or replace the old ones with the new budget. Um, I know you still probably have that presentation from last year, but I'm trying to think of what all. Yeah, EMS is probably there. the most effective I'm in terms of numbers. Fire calls and police on there. Too. Yeah, okay. yeah. I'll have to go back. I may even have a copy of that still in my inbox. Yeah, Jeff and I talked about that when I know we've got um, also the agreement with. Um, I'm blanking on it. Alaska. Alaska County. Yeah, I know that's that's on our agenda here. To great. try and get to in the next one. Okay. Month. I mean, it's no rush. It'd be great if by the first of the year we yeah. could start that conversation back up again. Make at least make that our goal by end of the year or something. Um, okay. I have one other thing. Uh huh. Um, on behalf of Wayne, he asked uh, to increase Alex Zerby's uh, pay rate from 20 to 21 dollars um, this past probation period, um, but he's in that waiting cycle of getting into the academy. So he asked that it be increased uh, beginning October 26. We have a motion to approve. So move. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thanks, Karen. Uh, attorney's report. <laughs> attorney's report. Same uh, two kind of items I've been uh, reporting on of late. Uh, first is to Obispo. Uh, I guess sort of good news. Um, Mrs. Russell didn't show up for our October 14th hearing, so the judge granted, I guess, our request for a demolition order. Uh, the landowner has 30 days to demolish the uh, structure there and clear up the property, remove the debris, and if not, then we, our, the town, is free to uh, take those steps. Not that we will jump into that right away, but at least we're free to do so. So that's that's that item. Uh, kind of some frustrating news on 415 Lakeshore and the sheriff's sale between my office, the sheriff's office, and the vendor that handles the sheriff's sales, SRI. We um, didn't get the notice in the paper in time, so we had to push back that sheriff's sale. The county normally does not have a sheriff's sale in December. I'm trying to talk them into doing that so we can go. That I, and I'll just kind of explain that in September we got all the paperwork to the sheriff and sent the costs in and everything else and was told by the sheriff they were good to go and SRI. <coughs> I'm not sure how that worked. I did notice, <coughs> I've been watching the paper for the notice and didn't see it last week, so I asked my assistant to find out about it. Couldn't get a hold of the sheriff that's in charge. Called the paper, the paper says, oh yeah, man, a couple of weeks ago. I didn't see it, so I didn't believe it. I said, you can proof of it. She got me proof the next day, but it was not of our share of sale, but of another notice. Uh -huh. And by then it was uh, too late to uh, get it in in time. We would have been missing it by a day or two. I don't want to take any chances with Mr. Van Hawk on this. So rather than chance a slight violation of the time requirements, we'll just push it back to another date. But that, that's, so that's going to uh, be set either in December if I can get them talked into that or probably in January uh, sheriff's still day. So I apologize for, for that, but uh, that, uh, and I'm really not sure how they did that, but uh, they had all the paperwork. We prepared the notices. We sent it to them. So I, I think it's just, I guess, one of those oversights in somebody's office. Uh, so that's the two things that I have. and. Yeah, any questions about that? Great, thank you, Jim. 
Um, any utility shutoff or ordinance violations on the call or in the room? Didn't think so. Any citizen input on the call? I'll take that as no. Citizen input in the room. Yes. Yes, Ann Subshot, um, 992 Westmore. I was just curious about the sewer work that's being done at Davis and what is that, Main Street? Is how far down is that going to go? Is that going to come all the way to Chadwick eventually? You know, at, at my corner there, uh, around the cemetery and then down and. So it's the storm sewer work. That, right. What's going on right now is just storm sewer improvement, and what's torn up in the road is where it'll end for now. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's the end of the project at this point. Okay, the reason why is because I don't know if you're familiar, but there's a lot of new homes being built right at that corner of Chadwick, and now across the road, there's um, some patio work being done, and we're running out of earth, and that corner is flooding at this point and now we've got two new homes and we've got more concrete over here i was just wondering if we were eventually going to get some storm work there to to eliminate our flooding at that corner it's it's, it's getting kind of bad and i'm curious to see what's going to happen with these other two new homes there there's one public drain i believe at the corner that runs then into a private drain at chadwick shores um, that's really the only storm sewer service i think that's, that's around there, there. so yeah. we, that this isn't going to be coming down there eventually no i i mean it's possible i guess if um there's continuing issues there for the improvements to look at uh trying to work with the private uh connection that goes out and releases to the lake but um i guess it's not been on our radar at this point but and i'll watch it too and like i said earlier i'll be coming to some meetings and stuff i'll keep you guys posted but I don't know what board it is, but it's decided to point out because the homes are there and the patios are there and the earth is gone and so the we water do, is coming. And <laughs> we do have a, a limit on the amount of hard surface you can have on each parcel. So that that's one of the ways that we try to keep that under control. But. Okay. I'm just curious. That's the that collection here. system Southwest, right? No, she's talking about just storm sewer, which oh, like I said, okay. we have one street drain right near there, mm -hmm. but um, just from talking about I know it it actually empties into someone's private system basically the Chadwick Shores put in when that went in so we don't have an actual outlet to the lake in that area any Im improvements or expansions we would do we would have to work with them on and see what their capacity is or possibly you know if it requires night in permit if there isn't one already issued I'm, I'm not sure it's, and that corner you know because we're on the hill coming down and then it it does Seem to congregate right in that whole corner, and I know Jennifer gets all mushy and walking the dogs along that <laughs> whole side is just all wet all the time. So you know it's just gonna get worse because there's nowhere for that water to go. So okay, just curious. Any other citizen input tonight? Move on to council issues. I still need to get with you about uh, ethics meeting, but we're looking at work session on November 10th. Would that work for you before the regular council meeting? Uh, I'm sure it would. Okay. Um, I know we've got you've got a public hearing scheduled for the regular meeting, right? Yeah. That night. So um, if November 10th is still solid with the council and it's good with Jen, that's what I'm thinking. And I was going to work on an agenda with Jim and send that out to everybody before the meeting. So if we can go ahead and schedule it as a work session, Karen, I'm thinking five o'clock. And I mean, if we need to follow up after that with a different session or something, we can always do that. But. Um, council input, Bill Githens, any council issues? Nope. Bill Clevenger, any council issues? No, Rich West, council issues? Nope. Sally Ricciardi, council issues? Uh, no. Anything else from Karen or Jonathan or Jim? 
All right, motion to adjourn to claims. Mm -hmm. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I got some purple on that sheet today. Do you expect to be in the November?